Welcome to Am I the Asshole? Long edition, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> so, let's just go through these. Am I the asshole for embarrassing my sister's friend and making her feel unwelcome? My sister, cousin, and a couple of friends came over last night after work. My sister brought a friend of hers I'd only met a few times that I'd never had an issue with. At one point, I went to the bathroom, and the ladies were in the living room, calmly enjoying wine. When I came out, my sister's friend was in the kitchen, arguing with my son. I asked her what she was doing. She said my son went into the kitchen to get food, and she told him to wait until I came out of the bathroom to ask me for permission. I stared at her for a second and then said, Who the fuck are you? You don't live here. He does. Who are you to tell him he can't go into his own kitchen? She looked surprised and said she was trying to be helpful. I repeated my question of why she thought it was okay to tell someone they can't use their own kitchen when she's a guest in someone else's house. She dodged the question and then brought up that she's a teacher, which isn't even relevant, and sometimes kids try to get around rules. I asked her what that has to do with anything. I then asked who even gave her permission to go into my kitchen. <laughs> She said she followed my son in. I said, so you think my son needs permission to go in his own kitchen, but you can go wherever you like in my house without invitation, so you have more rights here than he does? She, sa she said she didn't feel welcome anymore and was leaving. She went back in the living room, grabbed her bag, and walked out. My sister asked what happened, and I explained and she, that she had a disagreement with my son. My cousin and some of the other ladies said they thought it was strange she followed him into the kitchen and had been wondering why she did that and thought her motive was where to tell. My sister and a couple other ladies said her behavior was perfectly normal and I was unnecessarily hostile to her. My cousin said, but why would you confront a child you don't know instead of saying something to the aunt who's right here? That's so weird. Everyone but my sister acknowledged that part was weird and we all moved on. Later, my sister confronted me privately and said she was upset I chased off her friend. She said she really likes this woman and that I was way over the top in the way I spoke to her. I can be a little extra when it comes to defending my kids, so am I the asshole? No. <laughs> no, you're not. What the fuck? <laughs> like you said, who the fuck does this lady think she is? <laughs> Following a kid into the kitchen because you think there might be rules in place? Like, like I hope you don't have kids yourself because if you're going to be like, oh, you got to ask me Every time you want to have food, like, this kid's probably not, like, two. <laughs> like, they can go and get their own fucking food if they want food. What the fuck? <laughs> Let's see what other people say. Not the asshole. This lady way overstepped and you corrected her in a way that most parents would when their child is being attacked, and he was. Not the asshole, your friend was way out of line, she was in your house trying to boss around your son. I mean, seriously, it's like... This isn't the classroom, <laughs> this is a person's house, like... Do you not understand how... It's like, if she's a teacher, like... I wouldn't want... <laughs> I wouldn't want that one to be a teacher if... They're so weird about kids. Don't understand how houses work. I mean, my god. Not the asshole, but you could have, like, not cussed or whatever. Eh. I mean, I would have been so weirded out by that, too. I would be like, who the fuck are you? Who even are you? <laughs> and what are you doing in my house? <laughs> Especially if your sister just randomly brought this lady over, like, kind of weird. <laughs> See, she is a teacher at school. She may adhere to some educational standards off work, no issue, but she has no permission to invade people's lives in their own private space. I mean, yeah, even if the kid was breaking the rules, she was under no obligation to get involved. I don't even think... OP probably wouldn't have even been mad at anybody else for the kid breaking the rules, so she had no reason to, you know, 
It's not like she's going to be like, why didn't you tell him not to go in there? Like, how is she supposed to know what the rules are? Like, it's not your job. <laughs> this isn't the classroom. <laughs> and who the fuck even does that? In, you know, mm. <laughs> people are weird. Okay. Uh-oh, this one says it is the asshole. Let's see what this one's about. Am I the asshole for calling my dad's fiance ridiculous for wanting a modest wedding dress? Mm. It's like it's not your wedding. <laughs> my 25F dad, 47M, is getting married to his fiance, 33F. Okay, that age difference is like a whole... But that's not what this is about. So anyway... Erin invited me to join her, her maid of honor, and her two daughters, 7 and 6F, wedding dress shopping. I agreed as I thought it would be a nice blending experience with Erin. I don't know Erin all that well as my dad and I were previously estranged for years, and I am not in the wedding party, which I am okay with. When I turned up at the wedding dress shop, Erin was wearing a knee-length, sleeveless summer dress. This is important. The assistant had... Already pulled some dresses for Erin based on what she said she was looking for. These were kept in the changing room, so I didn't see them before she came out in the first one. I had no idea what it was she was looking for, other than she wanted something that would go with a shawl she had from her mom. Erin's mom passed away a few years ago, so this was something old. Um, when Erin came out in her first dress, uh, it wasn't what I was expecting. It was full length with sleeves and covered her all the way up to her collarbones. Ugh. The shawl was used as a head covering. <laughs> is she Jewish? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, this surprised me as she doesn't dress modest in her daily life like the dress that she had turned up in. She looked like one of those dolls that people cover their, <laughs> used to cover their toilet rolls. <laughs> wow. Um, all the dresses were the same. She was covered up in every single one of them. I asked Erin why she had chosen those ridiculous dresses and offered to pick out a dress that she and offered to pick out a dress so she wasn't so covered up. Erin replied that it was important to her to be covered during her wedding. She explained she was raised as a mixed-race household and her mom was Muslim. When her mom married, she couldn't wear that mo the modest dress as she was forced to conform to a traditional Christian wedding, and it was one of her biggest regrets. Her mom had hoped Erin would wear a modest dress when she was married, but Erin had chosen not to at the time as she wasn't particularly re religious at the time. After her mom died, she became more religious, but she doesn't wear a head covering or dress unless in her daily life. Okay, so the Muslim and the head covering. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Um, modestly in her daily life. Uh, when Erin and Dad got engaged, she had decided that she would fulfill her mom's wish. I mean... Hmm... Erin didn't say anything else to me about the dresses during that appointment. That evening, I got a text from my dad stating that he was disappointed that I had called Erin's modest dress wearing ridiculous. He said that Erin's religious beliefs weren't up for discussion or to be ridiculed and that she was disappointed in me. He wanted me to apologize to her. Am I the asshole for calling the modest dress ridiculous? Uh, personally, for me... I mean, you probably shouldn't have called it ridiculous, but I would also be confused if somebody came up wearing insanely modest clothing when they don't do that in their daily life. Like, I find that kind of weird. I, but maybe that's just because I have some weird obsession with keeping everything consistent. <laughs> and that does not fit in with my consistency. Like me, I'm always wearing t-shirts and shorts or pants or something. And it took me a while to get used to the idea of wearing anything other than that. Because I felt like that was inconsistent. <laughs> so the idea of wearing, you know, like a sleeveless dress. And then suddenly wearing a, practically a turtleneck dress. <laughs> just is kind of weird to me, but... That's just me being weird. I, it's not really... I mean, she can wear what she wants. Although I do find the fact that she's doing this for her dead mom kind of problematic. Because it's like... She's 
putting herself under the expectations of somebody else for what she wants to wear instead of wearing what she wants to wear. Which is like, you shouldn't feel obligated to do that just because your mom is dead now. Like, I would hope that her mother would rather she do what she wants to do <laughs> and not feel obligated to try to fix her mom's regret posthumously. Like, you know, but... I probably shouldn't have called it ridiculous. I would have just been like, why are you wearing such a modest dress? <laughs> you know, if... Like, is that, I'd probably be like, is that what you really want to wear? You know? Because, you know, you don't have to. <laughs> but let's see. Edit. I've seen some people saying that they can see why my dad and I are strange because of what I said to Aaron. We were estranged because he left my mom and I, and I, when I was just a child, he and my mom had a very volatile relationship from what I remember, but mom wouldn't let me, let him take me when he left. Part of the reason I thought it was ridiculous is because I thought she was doing it for my dad. That, yeah, it's, I mean, she's doing it for her own mom, so she is still doing it for somebody else, but, yeah, I, She's quite an independent person, but I have heard Aaron say things about dad's clothing preferences for her. Yes. I don't know, man. <laughs> things like, oh, I like that dress, but dad wouldn't like the length. In my opinion, that first dress wasn't the dress for Aaron, but the last one she tried on was beautiful. The age difference between them doesn't bother me. It never has. Um, as long as they are happy and consenting adults, I don't see why it matters. Yeah, I... Yeah, I think I would also be kind of concerned <laughs> about that, but it's also... I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, if she wanted to wear a modest dress, then it's okay. But the fact that she's doing it for somebody else is kind of questionable, but... I mean, it is her wedding. She can, you know, she can do what she wants as long as she wants what she's, wants to do what she's doing. Let's see. I called Erin this morning asking if we could meet for lunch because I wanted to apologize to her for my comments. Erin told me that she would love to have lunch with me, but didn't feel like she needed an apology. At lunch, she explained that Dad was more bothered by the ridiculous comment than she was. She stopped talking about dresses at the appointment because she was overwhelmed about her mom missing out on the dress shopping. They never got to do it last time as Aaron got married quickly. We talked a bit about our moms. As I lost mine when I was 19, I feel bad about what I said to Aaron, but she assured me that she's not upset or angry with me, and he realized that I was coming from a place of not understanding. We've arranged for to have dinner once a week so that we can get to know each other before, before going forward. Okay, so it's... It seems like the dad's got a problem. And I'm glad that, um, they got that, situ you know, the situation all understood now. <laughs> yeah. After lunch, dad texted me and thanked me for apologizing to Aaron. I'm glad he's found someone who makes him happy. Get it, too. I've seen some comments about why Aaron's mom couldn't wear the modest dress to her own wedding when it was a traditional Christian wedding. I really don't know. This was just how Aaron explained it to me. It sounds like her mom wasn't able to have any traditions from her own culture at the wedding, and Aaron made a comment saying that her mom would have loved to have been able to wear the shawl at her own wedding. It made for her. It was made for her wedding, but never worn on the day, but I don't know why, and it's clearly a sensitive subject, so I don't want to press more. Yeah, that whole traditional Christian wedding thing, I don't... You'd think they'd be okay with a modest dress. The shawl thing, okay. I can get why that's... A Christian might have thought that was weird, because... I mean, as I said, when... When I heard they were using the shawl as a headpiece, I was like... Is she... You know, not... Is she from a different religion? Which, turns out, she kind of is, so... But, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. Um, anyway, am I the asshole? Obviously, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. 
Yes. Yeah, I mean, for saying it was ridiculous, yeah, like, you shouldn't be calling it ridiculous. I mean, expressing concern for whether or not they're being, like, whether or not they're getting addressed for somebody else instead of, you know, the, you know, for their own taste instead of, it's like, if, if you felt like she was being controlled in such a way that was, you know, abusive or questionable, I can understand, you know, ask, like, you know, trying to make sure that she's not being, like, abused or controlled in some way, but, um, yeah, judging a dress just because it's modest, I mean, I personally wouldn't like a turtleneck dress like that, that's because I overheat easily and having stuff tied around my neck, especially if I'm not feeling great, makes me feel even more sick. But, um, if somebody's wearing a turtleneck, I'm not going to be like, ew, what the, what the hell are you wearing, you know? In fact, I'd probably commend them for being able to wear that without getting sick. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I would say, I mean, it's one thing to be like, that doesn't really look like something you would wear, but it's another thing to be calling, calling the dress names. <laughs> um, let's see. What's the next one? <sighs> Am I the asshole for telling my wife she cannot use my kids to fulfill her wish? From the outside, it doesn't sound... Like, you're the asshole. It sounds like she's being weird. See, I, 40, am married to Claire, 39F. I have two children with my late wife, who are 15 and 16. Claire had a grown son in his 20s. My late wife was Maggie, and I still have her and always will. She passed when our kids were two and three years old. We had talked about the possibility of it happening because she had a job where she put herself at risk to help others. She was still very, part of, very much a part of our story. When I was ready to date again, I went into it with some basic points that needed to be okay with a potential partner. Those were, I was not looking for a mother for my children. They have a mother and did not want a relationship where they called someone else mom. Yes, we talked about it. Um, Maggie w would always be part of the picture, and any partner of mine had to be okay with that. Maggie would not be forgotten or erased just because I was ready to date. I also did not want to have any more children. I like that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why, I've always been kind of weird about, like, when I was on dating sites, and people already had kids, and they said they wanted more kids, I'm like, I mean, I think it's mostly because I don't want kids, that I just found the whole idea of, of that so weird, but, um, yeah, especially having kids that, like, this would have been, like, a major age difference, and I find that also kind of, mm. but, um, that's not what this is about. So, um, when Claire and I met, she told me all of that was good with her because she had a grown son and did not want to start over, and she respected that I still loved my light wife. She and my kids got along, so I felt good about our relationship. Things were good until last year when my youngest told me Claire had been making them uncomfortable around Mother's Day and that she had requested that my child suggest a change of plans and we do something for her that Mother's Day. Claire was always with her son while the kids and I would visit Maggie's grave, go out for lunch at the dinner, at the diner Maggie and I took them to while she was alive, and we'd chill afterward. Claire wanted us to drop that and never said a thing to me. I brought it up to her, and she told me she felt it was time the kids and I joined her and her son for Mother's Day and embraced the person who was here. I told her she was celebrating with her son while my kids and I were remembering and honoring their mom. She was very closed off when I told her we needed to speak to a therapist because I could see if there was more going on. It's taken a long, it's taken this long, but from February she has been opening up and saying how she does not want, she does want my kids to view her as a mother, and how it, she isn't okay with how things are with them seeing her as family but not a parent, and with how much Maggie is still a part of things. 
She also admitted her relationship with her son is not what she has pretended it to be and she, how she wanted a chance to have a closer adult relationship with my kids and to be the mom and of, of an adult she always thought she would be. I told her she could not use my kids to fulfill her wish when they are not wanting to be part of that. She told me if I loved her, I would encourage them to at least try and that I said that to her in a very dismissive way. She told me I was being rude for the sake of being rude. Though the therapist agreed with me, Clara still heard about what I said. Mighty asshole. Um, no, that's a perfectly healthy boundary, and I hate it when they agree to something, when people agree to something beforehand, and then suddenly think it's gonna change. I feel like she did that on purpose, thinking, oh, you're gonna change your mind. Like a lot of people that like again with like wanting kids thing like a lot of people they get into a relationship and they say oh yeah I don't want kids and then suddenly they're like let's have a kid and you're like we literally went over this I don't want kids <laughs> I mean it's one thing to say oh I've changed my mind but the fact that it seems like she might have been doing that from the outset thinking that you're gonna change your mind or that you know I mean, I kind of get where she's coming from and the fact that your kids barely know, like, they, there's a good chance they don't have any memories of their mother. Because um, I know I'm actually one of the, like, rare people that has memories from being that young, but um, most people don't. So there's a good chance they don't remember her at all. They definitely don't have their own idea of who their mother was because they were so young when she died. So it does kind of seem like seems like a very difficult thing to try to have your kids know their mom when they don't have any memories of her. But um, that doesn't mean that your wife has the right to replace her in any way and the fact that she's trying to use her, she's trying to use your kids as a replacement for her kid because she doesn't, she doesn't have a relationship with him that she thought she would have. Like, I don't think any parent has a relationship with their kid that they thought they would have. And I think they just kind of have to deal with that. Like, that's like kind of a risk of having kids is that they're not going to be what you want them to be. They're going to be what they are. Unless you are so abusive that you are able to control how they are, control everything about them. But, um, yeah, I feel like it's, if you're going to have kids, you need to know that's a risk. That you're not going to have the relationship that you thought you were, that you plan on having. That they're not going to be who you plan them to be unless you're extremely abusive. You know, you just kind of have to deal with the fact that. They're not a second you. They are technically their own person, and maybe they'll be similar to you, but they're still a separate person. And let's see. Extra things. I remarried four years ago. My kids have known her for five years. We, When we discussed what Claire's role would be and the fact that she would not be a mother to my children, she wanted it to be clear that she didn't want to do all the work for none of the motherly benefits. So we agreed I would parent and she would enjoy a relationship with the kids. It might be more strict than some would say is normal, and I will acknowledge that. But we did communicate about this a lot before we married, and we are still, and we were, when we were still figuring out things. See, I mean, they went over this, and she's just, like, ignoring that. Like, I feel like this is one of the important things that you don't just ignore and act like you can finagle your way into this. You know, like, this isn't something to fuck around with. Um, let's see. This was fine at first, but then her relationship with her son deteriorated. She lied about that to me for at least a year. Uh, then it became a problem that we had agreed she would not be a mother to my children because she wanted the stronger adult relationship and was not going to have that with her son. See, she should have mentioned that, you know, she should have been like, oh, I've changed my mind, like, this is what's happening in my life, and I want something to 
But I mean, it's not that she's trying to use your kids as a replacement. Like, that's questionable in itself anyway, but... Yeah, that's... Let's see what other people think. Nope. <laughs> let's see, let's look at it from your wife's perspective. I assume her son does not live with you, and therefore she is surrounded by a family who do not want to let her completely in. Add to that, her relationship with her son is not good, so she's feeling isolated and an outsider. She might also be looking at the reverence you hold your late wife in. Jealousy would be natural. I can appreciate she wants to feel closer to all of you, but she can't transfer her failing relationship with her son to be replaced by your kids. Exactly. Equally, she needs to see she is going to be let into the fold a bit more. For instance, do you plan to visit her grave on Mother's Day in 10 years' time with your kids when your kids have flown the nest? Will you be insisting uh, you all get together for her birthday every year forevermore? I suppose my main question is, are you doing this for the kids or yourself? Or are you truly over your late wife? Uh, soft, everybody is stupid. <laughs> Everybody's bad here. I mean, yeah, it seems... Unless you got into your relationship with the agreement that your current wife is second to your dead wife, you are also kind of questionable. Like... I mean, you ob she obviously knew that you didn't want her to be a replacement mother for your kids, but did she know that you're kind of placing her in second place to your dead wife? I mean, maybe you assume that that's how every relationship is. That, you know, if you have a dead spouse, like, they're always going to be the preferred person. <laughs> but, I mean, I feel like some people, they expect you to get over that and focus on them. Although, I mean, you do have kids with your dead wife, so it, it also makes sense that you would be a little closer to her, but her, your kids have no memory of her, so it's kind of like, eh, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like in a way, it's all kind of weird. <laughs> But yeah, you're, I wouldn't say you're the asshole for reinstating your your beliefs that you have already told her pretty much before even the relationship began. Like, it's like, it's not your fault you didn't change your mind, but yeah, I would say no, but your relationship with your wife is kind of weird and I'm wondering if she knew to what extent you were going to favor your dead wife over her so yeah no <laughs> everybody's shit here <laughs> but yeah not for telling her you that she can't use your kids as a replacement for her son. Because I feel like even that, like, if she's not having a, rela a good relationship with her son, replacing him with your kids is not gonna help. <laughs> like, she should be... Like, if she wants a better relationship with her son, she should have a better relationship with her son and not just replace him. You know? But, um... If she just gave up hope on it, but then I guess it would make sense that she would try to get a replacement, but she's, people aren't there to throw away and replace it a whim, you know? It's, it's like, it's not how relationships work. This coming from somebody who is kind of bad with relationships, and I even understand that that is not how relationships work. Um, let's see if there's anything, uh, anything else. Let's see. Am I the asshole for asking my roommate to leave the room while quarreling over her breakup with her boyfriend so I could sleep? Ooh, this one's concluded. Am I the asshole for insisting my son be invited to my daughter's wedding after he got drunk, groped her friends against their will, and had to be tossed out of her engagement celebration? 
right now it certainly does seem like it. <laughs> Let's see. I, 56F, am in a bit of a dilemma. My daughter, 26F, is getting married this summer, and my son, 28M, was not invited. They have never really got along, and recently they had a big disagreement. My daughter had an engagement party, and my son got a bit drunk and got handsy with some of my daughter's friends, which they didn't like, and my daughter was furious at him, him, at him for touching her friends. She kicked him out, and I only found this out after the party was over. Flash forward to now my son got a message from my daughter uninviting him to her wedding because of his behavior toward her friends. He was so upset and called me to called me to tell me what she said, and it, to be honest, I think it's a shame that she feels so angry about it, but I ring my daughter up and I told her I will not be attending the wedding if my son can't come. Let's see, I felt as though what he did wasn't worthy of ruining family relationships, as him not being invited to a wedding is a huge deal. He all has always been a bit temperamental, and he gets carried away with things, but he means well. Even if he was autistic, that would not excuse what he did to their daughter's friends. Like, he's he molested her friends. Like, you don't just do that. Ugh. My daughter called me and shouted at me, saying I was enabling his horrible behavior, and even my fiancé's mother called me to express her frustration with my decision, but I really don't think I'm in the wrong here. If the friends don't feel comfortable, shouldn't they be uninvited instead of her own brother? No! She's not gonna condone her brother's behavior because he's technically got a closer relationship, biological relationship with her over her friends that she chose to have in her life. She didn't choose to be born to somebody who had a creep of an older brother, you know? <sighs> no. <laughs> That's not how siblings work. She didn't choose to have a brother that would molest her friends and get away with it. Like, no. It's like she didn't... You can't force a relationship between siblings. I'm sorry. <laughs> so... Yeah, you're the asshole. And the fact that you're, like, ignoring the fact that your son molested a couple of girls, like... Would you say the same thing if he had actually gone all the way and raped one of them? Would you be like, oh, it's not a big deal, just invite uninvite the, raped the rape victim? Like, no. If you do, then you're... If you condone your son's behavior... You're an asshole in more ways than one. And I'm not surprised that she doesn't have a relationship with him, because God knows you've probably... He's probably done some pretty nasty things to her, and you've let him get away with it. Because he's temperamental. Like... He's 28. He should... He should be getting over his temperamentality. Uh... <laughs> I can't believe people... Let's see, OP, when your son ends up dead from his addiction or in jail because he likes to sexually assault people, please look in the mirror because you are the reason that it will happen. You should be agreeing with your daughter and trying to get your son help, not enabling his addiction and illegal behavior. OP, he is not an alcoholic. This. Um, and the fact that the mother has the audacity to act like it's the friend's problem for feeling uncomfortable for being harassed and that they should be the ones not to attend. I'm saying that, OP, I'm saying that it is their problem. I feel sympathetic towards them. I just feel, think my daughter will regret not having her own brother at her wedding. Probably not, because of how fucking terrible he sounds as a person. Generally trying to help here. My aunt is in her 70s now. We was having a convo with her about family relationships. She insisted I reach out to a specific cousin and connect like you two used to. I told her thanks, but no thanks. I tried to deflect. She pushed. I told her he touched me inappropriately when we were small, so I'm not comfortable with him around me or my kid. She asked why. I explained. Told her what happened. She said, no big deal. So then I asked her, you have a 16-year-old granddaughter. How would you feel if your brother touched her like that? She gasped and said, I'd beat him up and throw him in jail. Okay, auntie. So how come I have to get over it, but you'd never let it happen to your granddaughter? She then remembered her own grandfather. As a child, he apparently would take the kids, set them on his lap, and y'all can guess from there. And she said she never saw Grandpa after a while and never knew why. I helped her connect the dots. They kept him away from the children because they knew he was dangerous, but they never told the kids or anyone what he did. His reputation in town. 
So Auntie and all her siblings had that happen and never got taught it was wrong. They had their trauma brushed under the rug, and it took 60-plus years for her to finally figure it out. Your son sexually assaulted your daughter's friends. Just because sober him says sorry doesn't make it a genuine sorry. If he was really sorry, he wouldn't have called you to fix it. He would have accepted his fate and done better in the future. I know this is long, but I really hope it brings some perspective. And he was also thought it was no big deal until the tables were turned. Then she realized how wrong it was. I hope you gained some insight as well in a non-harsh way. Genuinely hope this helps a little. You are the asshole, but learning could save some everyone from future incidents. Best of luck. Ooh, there's an update. Okay, well, this is getting lots of attention. I accept the consensus that I'm the asshole here. I guess I just didn't see what my, dun I, my son did as that bad because I've had lots of those things to happen to me from family members and such, and nobody made a big fuss over these things back in the day. But regardless, thank you all for those th who wrote in. Let's see. Let's see. Hi, I don't think I've ever been slated me more in my life, but I see why some comments really put things into perspective for me. Thank you for the ones who were gentle with me. Genuinely appreciate it. But anyway, little explanation, I suppose, where I'm from, we don't have an active feminist community at all. I won't get into too large details of my own life, as it doesn't justify what went down, but essentially, I suppose now I have realized that I was groped by my grandfather for a majority of my childhood, and I was and it, I was always dismissive of that behavior, and I suppose that is why I was so lenient with my son's behavior. It pains me to see so many people saying things that have been playing in their mind for years. I had hoped I hadn't completely failed as a parent, but I guess I have. I think I'm going to contact the girls and apologize for my son's behavior and apologize to my daughter. I mostly feel guilty for making this process stressful for her. We've always had a great relationship, and I hope this doesn't break it. I think I will be getting my son into counseling and me into therapy, as evidently I have some serious character flaws. I'm not a p bad person, and I'm sorry if you believe that I am. Thank you for your attention. Well, it's good that you did some self-reflecting and realized that your trauma affected your thought processes. Um, yeah, you guys both need therapy. <laughs> But at least people were able to put this in words that you understood so that you were able to realize that what happened to you as a kid is not okay and is not something you should be dismissive about in your own child. Um, yeah. So yeah, you were the asshole before, but now you seem to have figured your shit out, so... That's good. The end.